We're on to tutorial two in a series of five covering the basics of SVN subversion. In tutorial one, we set up our SVN server by installing Visual SVN Server. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the Tortoise SVN client and how we import our initial set of files to the SVN server. In modules and tutorials three and four, we'll look at check out and commit and resolving conflicts and then move on to tags and branching in tutorial five. So at this point then, having completed tutorial one, we have our Visual SVN server installed and we have a repo or a repository up and running. That repository doesn't contain any files yet, but the purpose of this tutorial is to get the Tortoise SVN client installed, create an, a, a group of files, and then import those files into our repository so that they're ready for sharing collaborating on and version controlling. The first step in this process then is to get the Tortoise SVN client installed and running on your client laptop or desktop machine. And for that we need to go to tortoisesvn.net and on Tortoise SVN we'll find the download tab and from there we can select the relevant client to download and install to our desktop or, or laptop machine. So once we've downloaded the installer, the MSI file, we can double click on that and we can start the install process. And we'll run through the installer, working through all of the prompts, accepting most of the defaults. One thing that is worth mentioning is it can be worth installing the command line client tools. Other applications may use that command line tool or you may start to use it SVN client from the command line yourself at a later stage. Once you've completed the install, you should be able to right click on your desktop and you'll see the options for SVN checkout and Tortoise SVN. The Tortoise SVN menu item then having a whole new sub menu related to SVN actions that are available to you. And at this point then we're ready to start interacting with our SVN Visual SVN server. So from the previous tutorial we created a repository repo one and we browsed to that repository and viewed the files or lack of files in that repository that are available on the server. However, now we have the client, we're in a position to start importing files into that repository, repo one, and then version controlling and collaborating on those files with our clients that are running on various desktop, laptop client machines. We're up and running with our Visual SVN server and an empty repository, repo one. We've installed our client, Tortoise SVN, and we have access to the Tortoise SVN options for checking out, importing, and committing files that we need to version control and collaborate on. At this stage then, all we need is a set of files that we're gonna import into our server what we've done in this tutorial is we've created an SVN tutorial subdirectory of our C drive and under there we've created another subdirectory called SVN demo which contains a set of files and directories that we want to import into our repo one repository on the server. So the command we're going to use from the client to achieve this is the import command. So from the top level directory that contains our files and folders that we want to import into our SVN server, we can right click on the folder and we'll see our SVN checkout and our Tortoise SVN submenus and from here you'll find the option to import. The import dialog gives us a couple of fields that we need to complete. One is the URL of the repository, so that's the URL that we see over on our SVN server for that particular repo and we have an import message that we can add to this initial import of the files. 
what we need to make sure when we import these files is that we've selected the right repository and we can do that by right clicking on the repository name in the Visual SEN server client and selecting copy URL to clipboard. Then back on the client where we have the import dialog, paste that URL in and when we click on the OK to complete the import we'll see the dialog pop up that covers the import and it'll ask us to enter the user credentials, user1 and user1. On importing we'll get confirmation of the files and the folders that are imported and also see the revision number associated with that initial import. So we're starting off at revision 1 when we make future commits and changes that revision will increment to 2, 3, 4 etc. Click on OK, come back to the Visual SVN server and if we refresh the repository we'll see now that that repository contains the directories and the files that were contained within the SVN demo directory and those files are now imported into the server ready for us to check out version control and collaborate on. It's important to note the structure and the folders that have been imported into the repository here. We completed the import from the top level SVN demo folder but that folder itself does not get imported into the repository. It's the files and directories contained within it. So in the repo or the repository repo 1 we'll see only directory A, directory B and the files and those are the files that are contained within the directory that we initiated the import command from. Another important point to note is that this local set of files that we've just imported have now been stored on the server but they are not version controlled and maintained by SVN on the client at this stage. So our files and folders in this SVN demo folder are exactly the same as they were before the import. These files and directories will only be placed under SVN control once they've been checked out from the Visual SVN server and it's this process of checking out the contents of the repository from the server that we'll cover in the next tutorial.